What's up everybody? Main Fly Guys here with another fly tying tutorial. Today we're going to tie a smelt pattern that I recently came up with. Um, and it kind of looks like this. Um, pretty cool. Is I think it will be great for dead drifting kind of in the spring when smelts are getting washed down after they have spawned. Um, so this is the pattern. I've tied it. This is just with um, some UV glue for the head. Um, I've done them without any head, you know, in smaller forms, and it also I think it looks fine. Uh, today I'm going to tie it with a fish skull, but um, obviously it can be uh, changed. So to start out, <clears throat> I have some thin, really, really thin, if you guys can make that out, rabbit strips here. And I want the back half to be about the same length as the hook shank. So what I do is I kind of measure up. Right there looks about good. And pull your fibers apart. Lay it down right where you would like it to be caught. It's important that it's right on top. I like to tie it in sort of right behind the point of the hook. Um, and this hook is a size 6 Mustad. I think it's a 2X hook. Yes, it is. It's a 2X hook. It's a straight streamer hook. Um, again, any hook really, any streamer hook is fine, but I like the straight shank for this one. So I do a few wraps on top, a few wraps on the uh, out front, and that looks pretty good from there. So now, <clears throat> kind of the different part than normal, I would say. I have some uh, of this sort of body braid-ish, but it's really a mylar tubing. It's really a tubing, so usually it's used for that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay it down kind of at an angle here and tie it in. And you only want it to be, uh, you want it to be several eye lengths before when you end. So I'd say three or four eye lengths, probably more towards four. So I wrap backwards to the point of tie-in for my rabbit tail, uh, my rabbit strip, I should say. And then I wrap forward um, and cinch down any loose ends that I might have. Now, as you wrap it, it might roll on you, but that's okay, it doesn't really matter. So what you're gonna do is make sure that your rabbit is uh, separate. You're gonna start wrapping this and make sure it doesn't clip your uh, rabbit strip here. All right, so when you roll it, make sure it doesn't pull it anywhere from its original position. And then we're going to just do some uh, overlapping wraps forward. I do three and then tie it. Now this is, I can't remember what size this is. I don't have the original packaging, but I believe that it's in either the medium or large size. So it's, it is quite bulky especially for a fly that's kind of this small, but I like it that it's bulky because it creates a nice thick body. So wrap it down pretty tight and then cut sort of close um, and sort of come in and finish it up, tightening up all the loose ends. That way it doesn't roll on you. Your body won't roll on you at all. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now, <clears throat> you're thinking, well, hey, there's a big gap right there, but we're going to address it right now with some schlappin'. So you're, I have white here. You're more than welcome to change up the color scheme. But this is a smelt pattern, and, and this sort of white is a good filler. So I'm going to tie it in right, right after that body, right, right after. And this schlappin', I pretty much want to go all the way... Uh, maybe an eye length, I'd say one eye length before, probably, yeah, right about there, one eye length. So what I like to do is palmer it, just kind of lick my fingers and work those fibers back because you would like these fibers to be pointing backwards. So as you're wrapping, just sort of touching wraps and just kind of keep working those fibers backwards. And <clears throat> I would do as many wraps as possible. Um, as many wraps as possible because I like a thicker looking fly here. When it gets wet, your body will really sort of show 
and come out and look really nice so I don't worry about covering up that body but just keep going it's important not to crowd the eye on this especially if you're not using a certain type of head it's very very important not to crowd the eye so I'm gonna do one more wrap that looks pretty good and then I'm going to tie it off right there that looks good I'm gonna tie it off again be careful not to crowd the eye one before one behind trim it off so now you can kind of what I like to do is sort of hold the fibers back and then work backwards just to kind of lay it down start making a cone head sort of type deal right there is pretty good so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that rabbit strip and I'm going to hold my uh, schlap in fibers down and pull the rabbit strip on top okay make sure it stays on top and so by pulling it down pulling that on top you can sort of start working those rabbit fibers back and find out where you want it to end I'd like it to end right there that way it leaves a nice nice sort of taper on top and so boom I'm gonna pinch it down and I'm just gonna do two loose wraps to start because you might want to pull it a little tighter just to make it a little snug fit and so that looks pretty good when you wrap this rabbit make sure you're not on the eye because if you're not on if you're um, a little bit before the eye it gives you a little room to trim off the excess that you don't need all right a little malfunction there my rabbit slipped out but luckily it's got some give to it so we were able to pull it back um so here's what we got we got our rabbit up top this kind of fluffy stuff and then our um schlopping down here looks pretty good so I have a fish skull. This is a five mil, number five for the fish skull. So there's what it's kind of going to look like. I've chosen red for the eyes. These eyes are fire living eyes, uh, five millimeter. So, and I like that. It looks pretty good. It's pretty bulky in there. Not too much wasted space. And I like that. Okay, so before, I'm going to back this up a bit. Before you get to, um, doing all that stuff what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna make just a little bit larger head so that my fish skull doesn't slide past it so I'm just gonna make a little bump there that way there's no way that my fish skull can slide past that that bump right there so once I have that little bump in I'm just gonna whip finish real quick and this is going to be all covered with all sorts of super glue so I'm not too worried about doing too many um, and smelt have a distinct dark back if you look at the picture of them so what I'm going to do is take just a uh, I'm going to take a premiere this Prismacolor marker and I'm just going to run it along the top of this sort of white rabbit and try to get in between each little nook there and basically after I've run it along the top, it's just going to give this smelt a dark back. And I'll sort of, I'll show you a pattern right now that I showed you earlier, but so there it is. It just gives you sort of a grayish back, very smelt-like back. And that's really all we're going for. So after you tie it, you've, you've colored it in, it's quite dark. But what you can do is sort of use your thumb and just rub it and I know it feels you're gonna get marker on your finger and that stinks but luckily we've all been washing our hands extra with the coronavirus hanging around so you thought you could escape it not even in a fly tying tutorial it is still in conversation so use your finger and kind of rub it in there and work that color and what it will do is it will lighten it up and it'll make it more of a, a grayish color once it gets in the water it's it won't be as defined um, and it gives it a much more lifelike appearance, I feel. So, that looks pretty good. How are we looking so far? That looks pretty good. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the uh, fish skull on. And I'm just going to test it first. And that looks great. How does that look for you guys? That looks fantastic. Oh, yes it does. So... Basically for me, what I like to do is 
I like to use super glue more than anything else for my uh, for my fish skulls. So all I do is I just put a few drops here or there, and then I also put a very very small drop on the inside of the actual fish skull itself. I don't want too much because you know too much super glue, everything becomes sticky. So so once I'm all set, I'm just gonna take it and I'm gonna put it on there. And then I sort of use my, my nails to sort of pinch it back. And how's that look? Oh, that looks fantastic. That is what we're kind of going for. So I've yet to do this. This is my first fly with a fish skull. Um, and that looks super great. All right, so once you have your fish skull, you can hang out here for a minute and just sort of let it dry um, to make sure that it doesn't sort of bounce back. But what I uh, like to do next is sort of come in here and just build up a little dam um, of thread. This way the um, the fish skull doesn't slide off the front. So all I do is come in, just do a few wraps to build up a very little dam. Again, make sure not to uh, crowd the eye because it's very, very easy to do that in this stage. Um, so just be careful and you don't need a lot of whip finishes here because um, it's going to be covered with glue again. So I only do, oops, that's not a good one. You know what? I'm getting a little too close to the eye for comfort here. Just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is back off a few wraps and that will be my whip finish or those two wraps that I just backed off. So if you're feeling like you're coming too close to the uh, to the eye, just back off a little bit and then just restart. There we go, and that's that's just fine for me right there. Plenty of room to fit any kind of line in there, so that is fine with me. And then from here, you can do one of two things. You can UV gel it. That's totally fine. Nothing wrong with that. But once it's set, it's set. So make sure. Make sure that it's in good standing and it's nice and straight. That looks great. And then, so what I'm going to do is I just have a little bodkin here and I put a little drop of super glue on the bodkin. It's much easier to distribute the super glue um, this way than just app, just use it, uh, apply it straight from the bottle. So what I do is just sort of tap it on that and then come in and, uh, and then you're done. That's it. So this is a great looking smell. It, um, nice. So it will sink a little bit. I did test it out uh, the other day. And if you are just swinging it, it will, uh, it won't sink, but what it will do is sort of stay in the film of the water, I'd say, almost like an emerger. So if you're trying to imitate a dead floating smelt, this is really good. And if you're trying to imitate a live one, because it has this little tail here, it has really good swimming action. And uh, when you use the really thin strip, it almost never foul. I, it didn't foul all day yesterday, so I was really happy with that. Um, so yeah, so this is a, a smell pattern. I have no name for it, but this is just sort of what I've come up with. Um, so I hope you guys liked it. Uh, leave a comment below. Please check out our new website. We have all kinds of good stuff on there, good fishy content. Uh, it's uh, mainflyguys.com. Check us out on Instagram. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, and uh, I think that's enough for you guys to do. So thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.